So what is overdiagnosis? When we diagnose a melanoma of a lesion which is benign, yeah, in actu uh, actually a nebus or something else, the, where the pathologists or we clinicians say it's a melanoma. And overdiagnosis may be present clinically, you say it's a melanoma and you excise it, but finally turns out as, as a nebus, or pathologic. The pathologist says it's a melanoma and in reality it is not a melanoma, which is even worse because nobody is behind the pathologists, nobody corrects the pathologists except biology. Let's start with clinical and uh, dermatoscopic overdiagnosis. Well, when we started to diagnose melanoma, we started with underdiagnosis, which means melanomas were not diagnosed because they were diagnosed as nevi or something else. These are historical photos from the 1950s. And you see, this is an obvious melanoma here. This was diagnosed as a melanoma. Why? Because there is already a metastasis in the lymph node. So they diagnosed melanoma very late when they already metastasized. And this is what they did to the poor patient then. This was what they called a wide and deep excision. Now, clinical criteria for melanoma in 175 or 50 years ago were established on these advanced cases. And uh, also this lesion is from the 1950s and you see already metastasized. So a melanoma in the 1930s, 40s and 50s had to be large and nodule and ulcerated and most of them already metastasized. And what was flat was not diagnosed as a melanoma then. So we had underdiagnosis. What is your diagnosis here? Melanoma. Any doubt? No. Now look what they wrote here. Pigmented senile patch, non-malignant. Because they didn't think it was a melanoma because it was not ulcerated, yeah? because it was flat. What did they write here? 1975, senile lentigo. Do you think that this is a senile lentigo? No. So this was the area of underdiagnosis. What did you write here? Malignant melanoma arising in a senile freckle. What is the senile freckle? It is the lentigo maligna part of the melanoma. But they could not diagnose it. So we had underdiagnosis. So when in the beginning, we had underdiagnosis of melanoma, and Jerry will talk about this. The concept of melanoma in situ did not exist at all in the 1970s, and some of you might even recall this time. Melanoma in situ was introduced in 1980. Before that, melanoma in situ did not exist. And these were the first photos of melanoma in situ that were published in uh, a book called Melanoma and Melanocytic Lesions by Bernie Ackerman. And we have to thank Bernie Ackerman to, for, because he introduced the concept of melanoma in situ clinically and also dermatopathologically. Now what about microscopy and dermatopathology then? These are textbook photos of dermatopathology books in 1947. This is a very famous book, the Lever book. And you see here, 1947, this is what they called, it's a bad photo, margin of an early melanoma. Je Jerry, is this an early melanoma? <laughs> I mean, this is uh, millimeters, no, probably a one centimeter thick. So this is what they called an early melanoma in the 1940s, 70s. And there were other misdiagnoses. This is 1953, active junctional nevus by Elm. Elm was the husband of Sophie Spitz. And what is this? Of course, melanoma in situ. Atypical and rejected melanocytes, melanotic freckle of Hutchinson. This was diagnosed not as melanoma. Of course, it's a melanoma now. This is in textbook severe dysplasia. It's a melanoma in reality. And here also melanocytic dysplasia in the 1970s. Now we diagnose this as melanoma. So there was a large period of underdiagnosis clinically and histopathologically. When Ackermann introduced the concept of insight melanoma in 1980, everything changed. We learned to diagnose melanoma in situ and early melanoma clinically, dermatoscopically later, and also pathologically. Now, this was not a precursor anymore, this macule. 
dermatoscopically, it doesn't look very bad, but we know because of the gray circles here, it may be lentigo maligna. And histopathologically, we see single melanocytes, and every uh, histopathologist will diagnose this as melanoma in situ. Melanoma in situ. So this was the period where we diagnosed melanoma early and just right. Not overdiagnosis, just right. But then what has been diagnosed as a precursor suddenly became a melanoma. So you also see this in 1955, a melanoma. Obvious melanoma here is the lesion a few years earlier, and here is the lesion uh, another few years earlier, and you see here Sinal lentigo, two months duration, and B pre-malignant lesion. This became this was the precursor stage, and this became all melanoma with the introduction of melanoma in situ. But from this moment on, it was also very difficult to differentiate some type of nevi from melanoma in situ. For example, Clark nevi. Now look at this lesion here clinically and dermatoscopically it has a nice reticular pattern but here there is some gray yeah so gray there is a gray zone but it's just the nevus clark nevus but another lesion very similar close up reticular and some more gray looks very similar but it is a melanoma in situ so melanoma and nevi can look very similar and we have the problem of overdiagnosis of nevi now at the moment here clinically, dermatoscopically, of course you would excise it. Why? Because it's gray, it's flat. Nobody would have excised this 30, 40 years ago. It's a Clark Nevis overdiagnosis. But this lesion here looks very similar clinically, and there is also some gray, only 30% more gray, but this is a melanoma in situ. Who can tell the difference? Very difficult. So because melanoma in situ the concept and nevi may look very similar. We try to excise more lesions. More lesions means more nevi to catch melanoma that may look like nevi at the beginning. But also this finished the era of underdiagnosis and inflated the incidence of melanoma because what was a precursor 30 years ago is now a melanoma in situ. And so the incidence of melanoma, as you all know, went up. So we came to this overdiagnosis. And I want to give you some example where overdiagnosis is very uh, common. And I want to start with children again, because from a pathologic point of view, there is a problem. You already seen Spitz nevi. This is a case from Jerry. I borrowed it from him. I hope he's, uh, he agrees with it. But there are many pathologists who would say that this is a melanoma in situ. And it is not so. Uh, it is not uh, so easy uh, the case here because you see single melanocytes, and if you don't know the clinical image and the dermatoscopy, many dermatopathologists would sign this out as melanoma in situ. But if you have this information, it's a female, it's 16 years old, it's still a child, it's on the back, and this is the same lesion clinically, and this is the same lesion dermatoscopically. What's your diagnosis? A read nevus or a spitz nevus. So overdiagnosis from a pathologic point of view occurs commonly in spitzoid or spitzoid lesions in children if you don't know the age of the patient. It all started with overdiagnosis. The concept of spitz nevus was introduced by Sophie Spitz, a pathologist in 1948, and she diagnosed spitz nevi as melanoma, and you can see here she introduced the term of melanomas of childhood. So she already overdiagnosed. This is the first example of overdiagnosis. And finally turned out that all her spitz nevi, that all her melanomas that were called juvenile melanomas were in reality just nevi. And if she had looked at the children, she would have diagnosed these lesions as nevi because these lesions don't, do not look malignant from a clinical point of view. Now, but also we overdiagnose in children. This is a study uh, uh, that has been performed not so long ago by Chappie. 